ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to Weird and Wonderful from the Depths. Should have mentioned that first. Anyway, um, it's been a while since we've done a Weird and Wonderful and I've got some catching up to do because there's lots of wonderful stuff. But I wanted to cover this one because it's very flattering and I'm deeply touched that someone would make something like this. This is... The Amphitazwa Alliance Raucus. So, for those of you who don't know, the Amphitazwa Alliance is a custom faction that I'm working on, on and off, for a custom campaign that may or may not ever get built. We don't know, but it is fun. And Mew2014 has made a craft for that faction, so thank you, Mew. That's very, that's very flattering. I'm touched. And also, this is a very good job, and I probably would never have occurred to me to make something like this. So... To read the workshop description, this is, uh, the Raucus is a super heavy tank consisting of 6 to 4 barreled crams, a 125mm anti-air cannon, and 6 missile interceptor turrets. The tank also doubles as a spawner, which builds the amphibious Spadefoot tank. This tank consists of two 100mm main cannon shells along with four uh, missile interceptors mounted on the turret. This is a faction created by Border Wise, so I recommend checking him out for FTD content. Thank you very much for the shout out. Much appreciated. And Raucus and Spadefoot are types of frogs, hence their name. So, this is absolutely delightful. So, let's have a look at the little Spadefoot first, because uh, this is so cute. This is a tiny little amphibious thing, very Command and Conquer. In fact, that turret looks very similar to the classic uh, Red Alert. Actually, I'm trying to think, Is does this look like the... more like the Mammoth Tank... Uh, from the main CNC, or... I think it does, actually. I was starting to think that the Red Alert Mammoth uh, might look like this as well. Either way, it looks very CNC, which is delightful. It is absolutely what we want to see. And what do we got in here? We have a rubber-encoded AI compartment. We've got a little propeller here. Presumably... Uh, yeah, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's turn the UI on. Let's see here... Yep, turn a preset. Could double as pusher, but I guess not. And tiny little APS turret here, teeny tiny, and just with not a super good rate of fire, actually not bad for a twin, twin barrel design, 21.9, um, like, uh, RPM, lots of surge protectors, little electrical engines back here, little tiny, tiny steam engine just to get it going, and it's just so cute, so cute. Also, missiles back here. And uh, let's see, these things, um, I've experimented with stuff like this before, this can work, it's a, it's a, a double whammy of Domfire explosive missile and missile interceptor. So it's kind of, it's okay at both jobs. And certainly it's absolutely fine for these little amphibious tanks. Absolutely wonderful. Love it. And as to the main, uh, to the main thing, uh, the Raucus, this thing is great. Like, the, definitely there's still things that could be changed, like aesthetic-wise and, um... Uh, just functionality wise uh, the biggest the only major complaint I have with this is that this main vehicle is not amphibious and the point uh, Kind of the main shtick of the Amphitazwa Alliance is that everything they have is either amphibious or it flies so That's not hard to fix. I was messing around with it and you just you know you change all the metal to alloy it floats and you can work with that uh, so if you want to do that Mew uh, Go for it uh, and if not that's fine. I can I can get around to it at some point. No pressure I love what you've done Never change. So yeah looking on the outside here. We've got light fittings. We've got this little delightful little uh, conveyor belt out here We've got a crane chonky crane very CNC type crane train crane storage over there very much very much kind of a mobile bias kind of feel, and like, I love these cram cannons, so this is a standard, pretty standard Tetris uh, by the looks of it, so standard diamond Tetris, uh, actually no, this, this is 3D Tetris, awesome, it's got a bit of a, it's got a spare gap in here, which I'm guessing, hold on, let's see here, ah, maybe the, maybe they just missed out uh, some things, so yeah, first draft, I get it. Let's see here, you could stick that and that and that. No worries. Still not bad Tetris, and also I keep forgetting that it's not as hard as I make it out to be for like standard diamond Tetris to have quad barrels like this. Quad, I am falling in love all over again with uh, quad barreled uh, cram turrets, and 
and um, APS turrets actually, simply because 4 is such a good number for From the Depths in general, because this game is based around cubes, and in two dimensions a cube is a square, so if you have 4 of anything it just works really well, and these pack a pretty hefty punch. Um, I'm trying to remember what these things are. Let's go find a fusing box. Where is the fuse box? Does they have a fuse box? Uh, let's see... The no fuses. Interesting. Where is it? Where? No fuses at all? I mean, they still hurt like hell when they hit things. But yeah, maybe fuses. Fuses are a good idea. This is kind of an interesting video because it's like I'm... Celebrating this thing weird and wonderful, but I'm also kind of reviewing it and thinking like, hmm, if I was to actually put this into a custom campaign, what would, what needs changing? So yeah, lots of big crams. Also, I love this. This is a straight up APS turret that is, is like sitting inside a cram turret. And I keep meaning to do something like this, but I keep forgetting. It's just... And Mew has made this look good. This looks very CNC. It looks like, you know, really dapper and really cool. And I really want to, I want to mount this gun in particular onto, onto a canoe or something. Also, accuracy before fire, that needs to be changed as well. And it's just, it's, this is so nice. This is so fun. Look at this. It's just, it's fully enclosed. Uh, can it turn all the way on its own? It might actually be able to. Let's test that quickly. Let's just have a testy test. Let's go here and set that to 505. It can! Awesome! So yeah, this is, a, this is a, I love this thing. So uh, we've got a control room in here that you can't actually get out of, but that's fine because there's a little video camera which is showing the view in front of us. So if I, I don't know, whoops, if I just spawn in, I don't know, something here. Let's go here. Look at that! There's the helicopter. Whee! And now it's gone. Disintegrate, this video is not about you. Anyway, so this thing is huge fun. Love it to pieces. And it's actually decently handy to fight. So it's around uh, 400,000 materials. Let's spawn in a fun airship. Let's spawn in... What's over here? Not the Eerie, that's... Eh, nah, let's spawn in the Eerie just for giggles. Let's see what happens. Uh, the little amphibious tanks do have a habit of running into uh, their mothership, which is a bit of a problem. But that's okay. And that's why we need fuses, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, I am very impressed with this thing, and I'm mostly I'm impressed that uh, someone would think, you know what, your faction needs a giant super heavy tank, which is absolutely correct, by the way. I don't think we're going to win this, but uh, one of the great things about having so many cram turrets is redundancy, which is fan dabby dozy. It's interesting that uh, I think cram cannons have been fixed so that they don't need fuses to penetrate stuff anymore. Which I think is probably pretty dope. You can see back there that tiny little tank doing its thing. So yeah, love this thing, love this thing, love this thing. It just needs a few tweaks here and there, and made amphibious, and it's ready to go and kick ass uh, in the custom campaign that I'll make eventually, probably, maybe, hopefully. So thank you so much, Mew2014. I love this thing. This thing's made me so happy. I guess a little bit self-indulgent for me to review it on Weird and Wonderful, but you know what? You deserve it. I deserve it. We all deserve it. We're not winning this, but that's okay. The Eerie is mean. The Eerie is a big blue meanie. So yeah, thank you so much uh, Mew2014 for, uh, for making this and sharing it on the workshop. And thank you all so much for watching. Oh dear, poor Walkers. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Weird and Wonderful. 
Farewell.